One of the most important questions uh, or subjects about wine in general is not wine itself, it's all that surrounds wine and the, the history behind it and the culture and everything. And um, I always say that it's not, an, it's not an originality for me that wine is a moment. It should never be the reason, but, the ex but only the excuse. Hello, we're Francisca and Cristiano Vanzella, father and daughter from Vanzellas and Company. I'm the oldest uh, family port company, the oldest family in the port business. I'm uh, 35 years old uh, and I look 35, no, just <laughs> adding, 30, that's how old I am. Hobbies, I, I like, of course, wine is my work, but also my hobby. But my real hobby is playing rugby and um, enjoying friends and the countryside. That's me. Today we spoke about life, port wine, Portugal, our family history, and uh, what we'd like to take away from this amazing trip, an amazing journey, which is, uh, which is life in general, the simple life, <laughs> according to this podcast. Thank you, Dylan, for the invitation. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, the Simple Life. And I'm really delighted to be joined here by Cristiano and Francisca Vanzella. Uh, besides me and my daughter, it's the first father and son, a uh, father and daughter combination on the podcast. So, uh, Cristiano and Francisca, thank you so much for for being on the podcast. Thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. I have to preface this by saying, and I'm embarrassed to say this, I have not drank, I have not drunk your wines. So this is something that I'm going to work on this weekend with my wife, and we'll have to remedy that. Uh, so I wanted to just put that out there. Um, but maybe uh, you can start off, uh, Christiane and Francisca, telling us a little bit about yourselves. Well, my name is Francisca Van Zeller. I am a wine producer in the Douro region, and I grew up in this um, in 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 this wine making family. Um, so my uh, first memories of uh, of childhood and that that have been so important to me are in the Douro Valley, uh, which was basically what I playing in the in the middle of the vineyard is what many people experience in parks or beaches and for me it was a vineyard and so nice. the smells and the sounds and the traditions and the people that i came across uh during those formative years uh have been so important to me um that i've wanted to make a, a life out of it and um and perpetuate it to the next generation and and bring friends around this life and bring family around this life. So that's a little bit about me. More technically, I studied history. I also have a course in winemaking and viticulture and um, and I have a master's in journalism. So I think what I most enjoy is talking about wine, um, telling stories around wine and uh, communicating um, wine because wine for me is very much, as I've said, happiness in life. Amazing. We're going to get into that for sure. Uh, what about you, Cristiano? Well, um, although I've um, I was born in Porto, of course, into the same family as Francisca, obviously, <laughs> uh, a bit a bit before uh, uh, some years before, I was not planning, and my life was not at all geared towards going into wine. My father right. was a civil engineer, my grandfather was a civil engineer, and um, I lived a lot of my youth uh, going through the vineyards and um, going around with my father hunting partridges and uh, in the hills and a bit everywhere and um, with uh, some family happenings during the early 80s I was thrown in at the age of 23 ahead of Quinta de Novar. Um I had to interrupt for uh, my, my career as a civil engineer which I never finished nearly did or three subjects left, but um, I was thrown into wine and I, in 1981 and 1982, and I never left. So it became not only a, a profession, but it become, became um, a good addiction, um, a very good addiction, addiction. And that's what I've been doing since 1981. I mean, for you, Christiana, to see your, your, your children stepping up and doing this and having that, not just wanting to come in and change things, but wanting to come in and honor the past and take the old story and the old traditions forward how does that make you feel very proud and very anxious at the same time because it, i'm am i leaving a, a decent legacy to to do that very proud because they they love they they like doing it and and if that continuity is always and i up to so many years if we talk about 
just over 400 years in the family, there's 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 another generation of continuity at least is um, absolutely fantastic. I mean, tell us about port because yes, it does have um, the best way. I don't know what's the best way to phrase it. It's got a stigma that it's an kind of an old person's drink. You don't hear of a lot of young people that are like, okay, I'm crazy about port. Tell us about port. Tell us why people should drink it. What makes it special? What makes it uh, so enjoyable? I think there's no, my my dad had a very good phrase. I'm, I'm going to leave you to it, dad. But uh, I think there's no drink that has the same music as port. So nothing sounds like port in the sense that sound is a sensation that we receive. And port has such a huge amplitude of uh, aromas and textures and what it literally sparks as you drink it, whether it's sweetness or acidity or all this, all the different aromas that you can get with port, that it has musicality to it. There's nothing that can, there's no other wine that can do that. You can argue sherry, and there's no other fortified wine. There's definitely no red or white dry wine or champagne or whatever you would like to call it, like port, because it goes from very young, expressive red fruits all the way to nutty, tobacco, uh, spices. It goes all the way into the West. If you want to do a geographical travel of it, if you want to do a um, time travel of it, you could do it nearly geographically and also in terms of season. And there's no drink that can bring in every season, every point of the map when it comes to aromas and, and flavors. So if that's what we're looking for when we're traveling the world, tasting different foods, taste, you know, and trying to understand different cultures. If you can try and understand that behind a glass of wine around a table with your friends, it's just most people nowadays don't dedicate time to it mm. and or demands time. You know, you have to wait till the end of the meal. I don't think you have to, but I mean, most people wait till the end of the meal and get their glass of port at the end. Normally by the end of the meal, you've had all these different things come to the table, you're probably not exactly 100% sober to dedicate time to understand what you're drinking. But at the same time, port is a life of the party enough to want to stick out anyway. So they'll, you can have a glass and it will call attention to itself if you're having a very old tawny port, for example. So port will go, hey, I'm here. Now you have to stop and understand me. And then once you do, it's actually a really elegant and pleasant experience. So my question is, why not do that? Especially when we're in a generation that is always looking for something to have authenticity, uh, value, excitement, history, people that, yeah. that are behind a product. One of the most important questions uh, or subjects about wine in general is not wine itself, it's all that surrounds wine and the, the history behind it and the culture and, and everything. And um, I always say that it's not, an, it's not an originality for me that wine is a moment. It should never be the reason, but, the ex but only the excuse. The excuse to get around the table um, if the excuse is a nice bottle of wine to share, that's perfect. It's about sharing. It's about everything else that's around, around uh, that surrounds the conviviality when you're sharing a, 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 ga a glass of, of wine. Looking for a home in Portugal? This break in Portugal, the Simple Life podcast is brought to you by Dylan and his team of certified realtors at Portugal Realty. Portugal Realty offers the exclusive Simple Life Home Buyer Program. Visit PortugalRealty.com today and book your free call to find out more. Welcome to The Simple Life. Let's talk a little bit about Portugal. You both have um, been all over the world. The family background is very diverse. You could be anywhere. You could live anywhere. Why Portugal? What do you What do you love about this country? What do you love about living here? I don't know, Francisco, if you want to go first. Portugal is obviously always home. Um, I've had two phases of Portugal. I've had the growing up until I was 18. Then I left uh, for a few years and then I came back. And then when we came back, there was a new revamp. The center was being remodeled. There was a strategy to bring life back into the center of the city, bring back students and young people, uh, bring back restaurants and shops and, you know, Porto as we know it today, maybe now taken a little bit too far with tourism, but there was a really, really nice sweet spot when I came back when I was 24. 
it was incredible because the minute I set foot back in Porto and Portugal, it was through a completely different outlook. And I understood how diverse this country is in geographically, culturally, politically, even in terms of everything, how we dress, how we cook. I don't know. For me, it's always about food and wine, <laughs> but also the history behind each, each, each part of the country. We're a tiny country. And yet it can be the Algarve has nothing to do with Trasjumonch. It's uh, and my family is both from the Douro region um, and from the Baira, Baira Alta. And even though part, no river separates it really because the Douro runs through it, but the south part of the river, it's all the same area. And it's a, it's a, it's a different land. We just all speak Portuguese. And I think there's a, a common feeling. But I think Portugal has an incredible sense of diversity, which has been great to keep me here. But I think what keeps me here is family. I've, I'm have i married now with two kids, so I have my family. And what keeps me here is wine, <laughs> is, is, the, is the Dora region, mainly. And what about for you, Cristiano? It's it's a bit the same. It's, it's um, home. That's where family is, but also... I've lived in Spain, I've studied in Spain, and I've traveled all around. And um, although I feel very comfortable in so many countries, and I have friends and family in, in other places, Portugal, apart from all the roots and everything, has that incredible feeling of relaxation, a sense of, when you come to Portugal, I think a lot of the guests and people who came here, um, you have a sense of uh, security and a sense of uh, warmth all that covers all around. And as a Portuguese person, that's uh, very, very good. Uh, it's a, it's a very, I'm, I'm very proud of that. Francisca, I'm going to ask you the next two questions. What's one thing that you want people to to take away from our conversation? <laughs> Drink port. <laughs> I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> Enjoy life. I think um, it's, um, I don't know, in, in, in current situations where everything is so polarized and we're so bombarded with, uh, I think, I don't know if you, I think most people feel that. I feel that a lot. I can't turn on my phone without being bombarded with with a certain feeling of hate or people people are hurt or people are scared. And so they come out with a lot of, tension and and that is expressed mm -hmm. through judgment through hate through you know being critical of others and um i think sitting back relaxing understanding that everything is okay that we can be open and uh and have a calmer mind it's just going to make our life our own life better and everybody around us i think what we can take away from this conversation is we found that way through wine in the wine trade but there are so many other ways i think but that I think mainly we keep doing this because it keeps us happy and open to others, to ourselves and to others. Cristiano, this one's going to be for you. And it's a question that we ask all of our guests. Portugal, the simple life, why? I think that we tend, as a, as a, as a country and, and people, we tend to complicate things. But um, then we do all we can to simplify them. And in reality, we have so many beautiful landscape places Cities are really easy going. I mean, some easier than others, but small cities are absolutely fantastic around the country, in, in, in inland. And uh, big cities like Porto and, and Lisboa and Lisbon are easy uh, moving and, and understanding in the way, apart from the traffic, but that's normal in everywhere. And the warmth of, of, of the people, everybody tries to help. I remember one of my friends having come here and having had a problem in his rented car and he went on the city, he couldn't find a way. And so he stopped a taxi um, and said, I, I, I need to go to this place. I can't find the, my way in and uh, because of the one of the Googles or something was not working or his phone was off or something like that. And the taxi driver said, just follow me. And he said, yeah, but how much would, uh, I'd like to pay you? No, 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 just follow me. I'll, I'll take you there. Mm. And the taxi driver just took this friend of mine to where he had to go in the middle of the little streets and everywhere and then said goodbye thank you very much enjoy your stay you know that's um portugal is a simple life in a way mm -hmm. this um, shows up the character of the people and uh, how easy it is to get around with 
with different people and, and um, understand and live. Life is not easy in anywhere, but here is, we're, we're a little, we, we forget that we're in a little part, we live in a little paradise compared to the rest of the world. I love that. Thank you. Francisca and Cristiano, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I've loved this. <laughs> thank you again for the invitation. It's been, it's been a pleasure. And I'm going to let you both call it. That's a wrap. So thank you once again to our guests and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget, Portugal The Simple Life also has a magazine, so download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem-vindo. Welcome to The Simple Life.